My name is Ed Frawley. Today I'm going to talk about how to size muzzles for your dog. I'm not going to talk about specific breeds, male or female, because there's too many different options. Learberg sells between 130 and 135 different size and styles of muzzles. But it doesn't matter what size your dog is. If you follow the directions I'm going to talk about today, you're going to figure out how to pick a muzzle that fits your dog. The most returned product that Learberg sells has been muzzles. People send muzzles back because they buy the wrong size. They buy the wrong size because they got bad information, be it from other people that are really well-intentioned, nice people. They just don't have the experience to give good information on how to size a muzzle, because it can be complicated. So we're gonna go through it, and it's gonna be in detail, but the fact is, if you do it right the first time, you're probably gonna get a muzzle that fits your dog. I tell people if they have a question about what size, they can call the office, but the office isn't gonna be standing there with you and your dog. If you do what we're gonna show you how to do here, and then go to our sizing charts, my recommendation for people is buy three muzzles or two muzzles. When they come, pick the one that fits your dog and then send the other, or the, uh, the other one or two back to us. If you send them back and they're in perfect shape so that we can sell it to another customer, we'll refund your money. You're only gonna be out shipping to ship them back. If you buy one and it's the wrong size that happens all the time at our place, then you're gonna to have to send it back and we'll send you another one and there's gonna be a period of time you're gonna be without a muzzle. But if you buy two or three, you're gonna have the right muzzle. When it gets there, send the other two back and you're good to go. So let's get on with this. We're going to talk about in this video how to size the length, the circumference, and what straps to pick so you can decide on what style you want for your dog's muzzle. We're gonna have another video that we produced on how to condition a dog to wearing a muzzle. Our feeling is that a dog should like to have a muzzle on. When it's conditioned properly, the dog likes to have a muzzle. It enjoys the muzzle because the owner does fun things with a muzzle on. The dogs learn, oh, I get to go for a walk. Oh, I get to do some training. Oh, I get to play. You can play with your dog with a muzzle. And we talk about that in the conditioning, in the conditioning online course. There's a lot of reasons to have a muzzle. It doesn't have to be just that you have a reactive dog that wants to kill every dog it sees when it walks down the street. So there's a lot of different kinds of muzzles and they have different uses. A lot of people think, well, if I get one muzzle, that's good enough for life. Well, let me tell you an example of why that may not be a good idea for you. Back in 2005, I did a video on muzzle fighting for police service dogs. In 2021, I redid that with my friend Kevin Sheldahl and put it into an online course with a lot more information. One of the things that we found is that if you train your dog to wear a police fighting muzzle, that dog's gonna get classically conditioned to every time that muzzle goes on, oh, this is cool, I'm gonna go out and get to hit a decoy and fight with a decoy because police dogs like fighting with decoys. Well, when that canine handler puts this muzzle on and takes it to the vet and leaves it because he's got to go on vacation and the vet takes care of the dog. If he puts that muzzle on the dog, the dog's gonna think, oh, muzzle fighting, I get to knock somebody down. And I personally know of a vet tech that was knocked out by a police dog because it was classically conditioned to muzzle fighting when that muzzle went on. How do you solve that? We well, solve it by training the dog in muzzle fighting in one muzzle, but then they have another muzzle they use for other applications. There's a lot of reasons for muzzles other than aggression. You can have dogs that eat rocks. You can have puppies that eat rocks. You can have older dogs that eat socks or other items. If that happens and they eat enough of them, you're gonna spend $1,500 to $2,000 at your vet. You'd be a lot smarter to have a muzzle and have your dog conditioned to wear the muzzle for long periods of time, and they can if you size it correctly. And they can learn to like it. There's nothing wrong if you have a dog that likes the muzzle like as much as you're going to see Cy here. He loves having his muzzle on because he gets to interact 
with Carmen, his owner, and they do fun things. They go training, they play. So when a dog is conditioned, my point is when a dog is conditioned correctly to a muzzle, they're gonna like the muzzle. They're not gonna, they're not gonna freak out when the muzzle goes on. The first thing you have to do is decide what style of muzzle. Do you want a polymer muzzle? We sell the chrome muzzles. The problem with the chrome muzzles is over time, they're gonna rust. Nobody makes a stainless steel muzzle. A lot of them also have sharp little corners on them. Polymer muzzles are gonna last a long, long time. So you have to figure out, do you want a chrome muzzle? Do you want a polymer muzzle? Do you want a plastic muzzle? Do you want a leather muzzle? Do you want a cloth muzzle? Uh, What's the application for the muzzle? Once you figure that out, then you need to figure out what size to wear. I brought my buddy here, and the key when you size a muzzle is get the muzzle so that it's not jammed up against the dog's nose. We don't want a muzzle that's flush with the front of the dog's nose. We want that muzzle to be like maybe a good one is the width of a finger, when it's on correctly, away from the dog's nose. Not like this, not three fingers, two's quite a ways, one finger's good. That's about what, half inch? So a half inch from the nose. We also don't want a muzzle that's riding, when it's on, it's riding up into the dog's eyes. Now here's something to think about. I'm trying to do a common sense thing here. Half of an inch here that if you push it, if the dog pushes into something right to the front of the muzzle, we don't want that muzzle to move up into his eyes. So what we do is we go about a half inch in front, we try and draw a line right underneath the eyes, and we want that muzzle to ride about a half inch in front of that line. So if the dog pushes into the muzzle, it doesn't go into the dog's eyes. That's important. One more time. Here's our eye line. I marked it. I'm gonna go a half an inch in front of that, which is where I want my muzzle to ride when it's on my dog's uh, nose and it's strapped on the nose. And the reason is that if the dog pushes into the muzzle and the muzzle comes back and is riding on the nose, it's gonna go a half an inch here and it's gonna be fine because it's not gonna be in the dog's eyes. We, if it's too long, if the muzzle is too long, say it's out to here, and the dog pushes into that, he pushes into it, then the muzzle's gonna go and ride right up into the dog's eyes. That's not what we want. So we go a half inch in front, and we go a half of an inch in front of the, half inch in front of the eyes, half inch in front of the nose. There's the length of muzzle that you need for this dog. Then we have to measure the circumference. So the easiest way to do it is with a string. And on a wiggly dog, it might not be the easiest thing in the do dog, easiest thing to do, but go to the back of the jaw, wrap it around, making sure it's back in the thickest part of the dog's jaw. There's your circumference. That's the actual circumference that you start with. We don't want our muzzle to be that tight on the jaw. We have to leave room for the dog to open his mouth and pant. So we tell people for larger breed dogs, go two to three inches more. Small little dogs, you may only need an inch bigger than the circumference for a little bitty dog. So we can't tell you, and I don't agree with doing breed specific recommendations because Different dogs of the same breed can have this different size muzzles. So measure your own dog. And I know there's a lot of manufacturers out there that say, oh, you have a female Doberman, or you have a female Shih Tzu, or you have a female Bulldog, or you have a female Pit Bull. That's not the way, in my opinion, that's the right way to do it. You measure the circumference. That's the circumference of the dog's uh, muzzle and you either add one inch, two inches, or three inches, depending on the size of the dog's head. If you do that, you're gonna be just fine. I'm going to take a second here and revisit the concept of measuring the circumference of the dog's nose to determine the size of the muzzle. There are places on the internet where people are told to put a tennis ball 
in a dog's mouth and then measuring the circumference with the ball in the mouth. We have to disagree with that, respectfully disagree with that, because we get too many people that buy muzzles from us and return them when they've been told to do that because the circumference is wrong. There are too many different possibilities for small dogs, brachycephalic dogs, dogs with a short nose and a flat face, uh, or dogs with a big head that the muzzles won't fit if we use the tennis ball in the mouth concept. What happens when a dog gets a really large muzzle, and you can see pictures like this, but if you have a dog that is handler aggressive, dog aggressive, reactive, and his muzzle is too big, and you have a dog that does not want to have a muzzle on his head, the dog can get that muzzle off, and then we're gonna have a disaster, or we have the potential of a disaster, and you only need to go to our webpage on dog bites, and I will say a warning here that there are photos that people have sent us of being bit by their own dogs that are disturbing to a lot of people. And that's our concern. We don't want people to get hurt. We don't want dogs to get hurt. We would rather have a muzzle sized with the correct circumference. And I'll use this. If the muzzle is a two strap muzzle like this, where there's only one strap behind the dog's ears and it goes on and my buddy here, I'll get out of the, my black shirt out of the background, my buddy here has a strap behind the ears and this muzzle is, has so much room underneath and that dog wants it off, he's gonna lay down and he's gonna pop it up and it's gonna come right off. So, I'm not criticizing the people that recommend a ball in the dog's mouth. I'm just saying that we get a lot of muzzles back that were measured incorrectly because of this. So take it for what it's worth. Measure the circumference of the dog's muzzle from the back and depending on the breed of the dog, the size of the dog, the size of the dog's head, add one, two, or three inches to the circumference and get your muzzle that way, keeping in mind that you want that muzzle to ride a half an inch below the eye line and a half an inch in front of the nose. So if he gets pushed on it, it doesn't go into the dog's eyes. That's my only point that I want to make concerning the ball in the mouth. Now there's no question that dogs need to have enough room in a muzzle to pant. I'll use the example of a police service dog like you see here in a training exercise. When training police service dogs like this, the muzzles have to stay on, but the dogs have to be able to pant. The only reason I'm using police service dogs as an example here is because no one needs a muzzle to stay on more than a police canine handler. And maybe the police canine handler's decoy that's doing the work. If we have a small dog, like a Shih Tzu, like my Rosie, they may only have a snout that's an inch and a half long. Well, you may not be able to use the half inch measurement to help size a muzzle for that dog. All we can do in this case is to keep the front of the muzzle off the nose of the dog. And then there's the bully breeds. You're going to have a similar problem, a dog with a short snout, but a large circumference plus a wide head. We're looking at photos of Bonnie now from our office. She has a short snout and a wide head. No one makes a muzzle that right off the shelf would fit Bonnie. So we had to modify the muzzle by bending the sides out a little so it would fit over her head when it slid on. Now the problem with doing this is, and I hate to say it, but as soon as the muzzle gets bent, there isn't re any returning it back to us because we can't sell it as a new product to another customer. We're trying to work with the people that make our muzzles to design a few options that solve this problem. But 
as of now, that's not been done. Now, the next thing that we need to talk about are the straps on a muzzle because there's different straps for different styles of muzzles. A normal muzzle has, some people will call this a two strap, I call it a one strap. Uh, they call it, they call it a two strap because it's got two straps. It's designed, once it's fit, it's designed to go beyond the dog's head and to ride behind the ears like this. A one strap or two strap muzzle is not as secure as the muzzles like you see on my buddy here, which I call, a lot of people call it a three strap muzzle. One, two, three, goes between the ears. It's just more secure. Our police muzzles that we have are three strap muzzles. You will see, and I will show you when we test muzzles, how the police dog, police dog handlers, the canine handlers, can grab their dog's muzzle and pick them right up off the ground and their muzzle stays on. They have to do that for a police muzzle. Most pet owners don't really need to do that unless they really truly have a reactive dog or a very aggressive dog, dog aggressive. They need to make sure that that muzzle stays on. Our police style muzzles all have the strap between the ears. Jafco makes this black muzzle. They make a white muzzle with a strap between the ears. And you can select that if you want. Most, it's a little more expensive, not much more expensive, but most muzzles basically have one strap behind the ears and that's it. Now, I will say this, the Baskerville muzzle does have a good idea. They have a loop on the back of their muzzle. That loop is designed to have the dog's normal collar go on it. This would be the green is the normal collar that goes around a dog's neck. So that collar holds the dog, holds the muzzle that way. The Baskerville muzzle has a strap between the ears, has a strap behind the ears, and has the strap for the dog's normal collar. Now the problem that I have with Baskerville muzzles is if you do have an aggressive dog, and they, even though this is fit properly, I don't care what people say, that dog can bite through these openings. So you need to consider that when you're dealing with or trying to figure out what muzzle to buy. This has applications, but don't kid yourself that a very aggressive dog can't get his mouth through here and bite somebody. So the last thing that I want to talk about is it can kind of be a pain to get this dog, get your dog, to put the muzzle and put the strap on if you don't condition it properly. If you condition it properly, the dog's going to like to have his muzzle on. That people can use besides having this little muzzle or this little strap, which they can mark with a little dot of white paint to know how tight it should be before they put it on, just like we do with remote collars and everything else. There's another option, and I won't go into how we do it. We'll put it on the product page. I'll list the product page here. But we do have a kit that I designed that's a quick release so that you attach this permanently you, you design it for your dog, your specific dog, and we show you how to do it in the video on the kit. So you design one end of the quick release permanently attached with Chicago screws, but every time you put, take it off and put it on, it's just as easy as that to put the muzzle on. I personally, if I had a dog that was reactive and I had to walk that dog a lot, if I had a dog that was aggressive, had to walk it a lot. If I had a, two dogs and one was more aggressive to the other, or they were both aggressive, they would each have their own muzzle. They'd be, they'd be sized correctly, and to put them on takes that much time. And take them off, it takes that much time. So I'm putting the product number in the video now, and then I've got a little video showing how I cut this up and, and make it a permanent deal on these muzzles. If you're new, to introducing your dog to muzzles in July of 2021, I'm introducing a new online course 
titled Conditioning Your Dog to the Muzzle. It's a detailed course that will teach your dog to be happy to wear his muzzle.